The Mist Pass in Blender is a tool that can be used for all sorts of post-processing effects, including adding mist, fog, and haze to a render. It's an additional pass that Blender takes when rendering and therefore doesn't require any volumetrics which really slow down render times. This Blender post-processing tutorial will cover how to set up, adjust, and render the mist pass. We will then cover a few methods to mix the mist pass into the underlying render to get an effect like this. And all of this is right inside of Blender. My name is Brandon, let's get started. The mist pass uses a range of distances from the camera's view to create a map that looks like this. Parts that are farther away are closer to being fully white. Parts closer to the camera will be darker, that is closer to black. If you've seen my shading tutorial, we talked about how black represents a value of zero and white represents a value of one. Grayscale values represent values between zero and one depending on how dark they are. This black, white, and gray information is what can be used to mask in effects over the base render after it's completed. To tell Blender that we want it to create a mist pass, we go to the Properties panel and in the View Layer Properties tab, there's a list of passes we can include when we render. Each of these passes capture different types of information about the scene. Check the box next to Mist, and this has to be done before we render or Blender won't capture information from the Mist Pass. Now back in the 3D viewport, select our camera to control the Mist Pass. First, with the camera selected, go to the Camera Properties panel, and under Viewport Display, check the box for Mist. This will display the start and end points projecting out of the camera. In the 3D viewport, we see this line extending out from the camera. At each end of the line is a white dot, which represents where the mist measurements begin and end. For a long time, I assumed this was done automatically, but it's not. The mist pass defaults to a certain depth that probably doesn't align with the depth of our scenes. Now in the world properties, yet another tab, I kind of wish this was all in one place, but it's not. We have a section labeled mist pass here as well. Expand that, and here we give the mist pass a start and end distance. The start is how close to the camera the mist will begin to register. For the effects we want, we at least want this to be in front of the closest object in our scene. Notice that adjusting this setting moves the starting point of the mist closer or farther from the camera. But most importantly is this depth setting. This we want to extend all the way past the farthest object in our scene, and we probably don't want it to go too much beyond that. For large scenes like this, we almost always have to extend this from its default. And the last setting is the fall off, which determines how the gradient from white to black will occur. The default is quadratic, and that's probably good. I'll render some mist passes with different falloffs and show them on the screen. So now we've set up our mist pass. Let's render out the image like we normally would and see how to use it. This image is rendered, so let's go to the compositor. This is how I set up my compositor, by the way. I like to have a large section of the workspace with an image editor set up. Set the image in the image editor to render result, and it'll show the final compositing output over here. This is better than tiny preview images or having the image in the background behind the nodes, at least in my opinion. In this render layers node, we see some familiar outputs, but now we also have one called mist. To see what the mist pass looks like by itself, just connect this to the composite node. There we go. We have a nice gradient mask showing parts of the scene that are farther or closer away from the camera. I recommend saving this image. It will definitely be useful for any post-processing we want to do outside of Blender but we can do a lot with it right here inside the compositor also. Let's add a mixed color node. Connect the image, the full rendered image that is, into the top socket. Whatever goes into this top socket will be the base layer. Then let's run the mist pass into the factor of the mixed color node. This means the black and white gradient of the mist pass will control how we mix another color into this image. Now it's just mixed with the white from this bottom color into the image right now. There's two things we're gonna to do to make this look a lot cooler. But first, if you have made it this far, please give the video a like. It totally makes my day, thank you so much. Let's make the bottom color. This is the color that's going to be mixed into the image, something a little more interesting. I'll just start with blue. This next step is what's really going to make this thing look magic. Add a color ramp node and drop it onto the noodle of the mist pass. Now move the black handle of the color ramp up a little bit. There's a slight lag, but this is moving the color backward in the scene along the gradient of the mist pass. And right there, that already looks really cool to me, but we can keep playing around with this. We could slide the white handle inward to bring the back of the mist pass in a little bit stronger. We could select the white handle and make the white color a little darker. This is going to reduce the strength of the strongest parts of this mist pass. And one last thing we can play around with is the mix method of this mix node. 
although I really like how the default mist looks here. These others might be cool. Screen will usually give it a little brighter color. Add will be a little bit different. You can play around with these and you might find one you like more for your particular image. But really just that simple step of mixing a color into the scene with the mist pass did a lot for this render. We can play around with different colors. A lot of the time just white looks pretty good. Or pick a color with just a little bit of saturation. And that's most of what I have for inside of Blender. But if you're a Photoshop user, there are all sorts of things you can do with the mist pass in Photoshop. We can even paint in parts using the mist pass as a mask. Max Hay, whose environments course I recently took, covers this a lot in many of his videos. If you want to learn cool tricks to use Photoshop to improve your renders, go see his channel. It's great. Anyway, that was the mist pass. I have an ambitious goal of getting to 100,000 subscribers this year. I would love for you to hit that like button. Become a subscriber, share the video, anything to help. I hope this was useful. Take care and stay creative.